Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin using logarithmic regression. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So logarithmic regression is one of the things we've spoken about on the channel going all the way back to 2019 when we first discussed this indicator. And the general idea is that Bitcoin's moves over the macro scale, while it does continue generally higher, the returns ultimately diminish. And so from one cycle to another, you ultimately experience diminishing returns, right? This is just sort of a byproduct of, a, of an asset becoming capitalized as it's adopted by more and more people in, in the world. So the whole idea in, in this, you know, on this chart that you're looking at right now is that there is a lower regression band fit to quote unquote non-bubble data, right? So sort of the data over here that's deemed say not part of the, of the irrational mania phase. And it was fit through you know plenty of this data in here and then also data going all the way up to the end of 2018 and early 2019. We also have the upper logarithmic regression band fit to peak data. So it was fit to say this data point, this one, and then this one over here as well. When we hit the upper logarithmic regression band back in April, or sorry, we hit it in February, I believe, but we, we hung around the upper regression band for the first part of 2021, this is when I, you know, I, I became somewhat bearish going into the summer and thinking that we needed to have a, a summer lull. And then we did, and when we came back up, we didn't actually quite make it to the logarithmic regression ban. Now, one of the things I've, I've said many times on the channel for the last two years is that by the time we end a future bear cycle, like a future bear market, the lower regression ban would ultimately need to be refitted. The reason for this is because if you can imagine if I had only ever fit it to say data points through here, right? So through this bear market and then the bear market that came after it, the regression band would have arguably, you know, predicted much higher prices, but by refitting it every cycle, right? So like by, by refitting it every cycle, you tend to get a, a better and better fit sort of going forward, okay? And, and that's why, you know, that's why I do think it would be prudent for us to ultimately get a, a slightly better fit before we get into, you know, into the full on next bull market. Now, where does it stand right now? So the lower regression band fit to non-bubble data right now goes from around 18,492 up to 40,652. So quite a long range, quite a big range. We're at the bottom of that range right now. I mean, 18.5 is sort of the lower bound on it. It doesn't mean you can't go below the band, the regression band we have before. Uh, if, if you remember, so it was fit to data only through here. And for a long time, it, it worked out pretty well. But then we had, you know, that very brief recession back in 2020. And we ended up capitulating below the regression band to, to the tune of about 20% or so. Note that if Bitcoin were to go 20% below the regression band from where it currently stands, it would actually put it all the way down at around uh, fourteen to $15,000 or so if it were to make a, a similar type move in a future recession, right? For the where the current valuation is. What is interesting so far is that despite everything, uh, and despite the fact that this was fit a long time ago, so far the regression band is holding. now. I still likely will refit it uh, sometime in the next couple of months. The whole idea was just to refit it, you know, at the end of 2022. We had the bear market in 2014. We had one in 2018. We have another one here in 2022. So the whole idea is just to get a, a slightly better fit. I don't think it's ultimately going to change it that much. Um, I think it'll slightly lower the fair value fit to non-bubble data. So like the fair value of Bitcoin right now fit to non-bubble data is 27.4k okay so it's 27.4k so a slight refit is only going to change it by marginally a few thousand dollars right maybe 23k 24k or something like that 
would ultimately be the fair value of Bitcoin if it's to non-bubble data. But we're going to wait until the end of the year, I think, to, 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 to slightly change it. With that said, I mean, so far, this one has been holding up uh, relatively well. So it, it also might be informative to also continue to track this one and see how does it hold up even though it was fit, you know, three years ago, right? It was fit in 2019 and, and the lower bound on this so far is still holding. Now, some of the things that we've talked about before with the bull market support band, and I don't want to talk about that in this video. And this was when we were back up here. If you, if you remember back to early 2022, when we were trying to get above the bull market support band, we said, look guys, it's just the same thing we saw in 2018 right? Like a putting in higher lows and then ultimately getting rejected by the 200 day SMA. That's what happened, right? We ultimately got rejected by it and the bull market support band, we went slightly above it. And we said that for us to have any real chance of getting back above the bull market support band, we need for the price to go back to the lower regression band. Okay. This was the argument back then was that for us to actually have a realistic chance to get back above it. So that's why back over here, I wasn't that optimistic that we would get back above it if you think back to early 2022. And the idea that we would just get rejected by the 200 day, you know, fail to put in a higher low and then ultimately capitulate. Now we find ourselves at the bottom of the lower regression band. So what that means is that there is at least a reasonable chance, right? There's a non-negligible chance that we could in fact break above it. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the bull market is about to take off. I would still contend that we likely have another year of, of accumulation ahead of us where you could still, in fact, go lower. Um, but it would at least be a, you know, the first positive sign that Bitcoin has seen in a long time. One thing that I think some people, uh, you know, perhaps forget about is that in 2014, we actually put in a low we went up to the bull marks were fan, you know, sort of right above the regression band, got rejected, went up to it again, blasted through it, only to then capitulate one more time at, you know, in Q3 of 2015, where we actually technically put in a slightly lower low compared to where the first one was. And if you go to say the 2018 bear market and then what happened during during the recession, the very brief recession we had in 2020, we put in a low sorry, we put in a low and then we put in right around the fair value. Then we put in a lower low, which went below the regression band, or sorry, we put in a higher low, but it was below the regression band at the time. This was actually caused, uh, of course we know, I mean, that was, you know, right around the time of the pandemic. And, and we also had in fact a recession. So we could in fact see something like that play out again, where Bitcoin, um, you know, does see a, a, another, major drawdown at some point when we actually get into uh like the the recession right when we get into the recession when unemployment starts to go up um and all and all that if i were to you know speculate on on what this accumulation phase if we are in the beginning of it what it would look like would probably be more like this than this one right if i had to guess the one of the reasons is because I think you could argue that this cycle, this double peak cycle looks a lot more like this double peak cycle. I mean, this one went, the second peak went higher and it actually went up to the regression band, but it does seem somewhat similar, right? Like the the idea of, of a double peak cycle. And if it were to play out exactly like this double peak cycle, where we first got above the 20 week SMA over here, we got above it over here. We then came back up to it only to get rejected that could be potentially where we are today, and that would ultimately lead to a, a potentially lower low if it were to play out like that. Remember, back over here, the regression band would have looked a lot different. It's only once you have a lot more data that you can actually fit it, and 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 it and it and it changes it, right? It, it changes it when you when you refit it in the future. Okay, I mean, there's there's this thing, you know, you can overfit things and, and make it look like past things were obvious when in fact they they maybe were not that obvious. But anyways, you know, right now we find ourselves at the lower part of the regression band and we're coming up on the bull market support band. Now, there is a chance that we break above it. And I think a lot of that is going to depend on on what the Fed does uh, next week. So I think short term is going to be very much dependent on on the terminology and the tone that that Powell gives us next week. You know, 
is the Fed going to come out somewhat dovish or are they just going to get the same speech? Is Powell going to get the same speech that he gave the last two uh, times he, you know, he, you know, at Jackson Hole and, and the September FOMC meeting? If he gives a similar speech yet again, then arguably it would be more likely we get rejected by the bull market support ban. If he comes out and says the Fed is going to start lowering interest rates, or at least lowering or slowing the, the speed at which they're hiking, some people would interpret this as a pivot. I don't really think of it as a pivot, but some people would interpret this as a pivot. You could see us break back above, only to you know eventually come right back down and continue on with the sort of long accumulation range or whatever you know whatever you want to call it before we eventually get into a future bull market. And again, even here you could break above and then still come down and put in a lower low. I mean that's what we did in 2015. And we also saw something similar over here in 2020, but it was it was also in fact a higher low. So the closer we get to the Bitcoin having in 2024, I think the more it would make more and more sense to to shift to a, a more bullish bias. But for now, I don't really think I, don't, I mean, I well, I would say Bitcoin could break through this. I don't think we're going to come back up and put in new all time highs in 2023. I know I know that is. Um, is is a a theory and a thought and even once upon a time i thought uh i thought the most likely year that bitcoin would hit 100k would be 2023 i think now i think the earliest realistic year that it could hit that would be 2024 um and 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 maybe not even not even not even then i mean i think we still need a ton of time and, and we got to wait for the fed to get off this quantitative tightening you know program before I think we have a realistic shot of, of seeing those types of numbers. But I do want to draw your attention to these logarithmic regression, the, the logarithmic regression channel. We are near the bottom of it. It was fit a long time ago. We are coming up to the bull market support band. If we break above it, there will likely be a lot of people FOMOing back into the market. At that point, you could easily see it come back down. And if we get rejected by it, you know, if, if Powell comes out and is super, you know, super hawkish or something. Uh, which could happen. I mean, you know, core CPI is is at new highs. You know, it's higher it's higher today than it was for the entire year. So if core CPI comes out um, and and it continues to come in hot, and the the Fed continues to 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 provide us with oversight uh, oversized interest rate hikes, then you could see a lower low sooner rather than later. And then we and then we sort of try to work our way out of it into the next uh, the next bull cycle. But that's where we currently sit. Again, as I've said, long term value, I think, probably, you know, around 20k, I think it is, is going to provide a lot of long term value for Bitcoin. Is it going to give you the best price in the short term? It's hard to say. Uh, short term moves are, are very difficult to predict, at least for me, they are. Um, but I, I do think around these prices, over the macro scale is, is still going to be a relatively attractive price. Let's see what you know, let's see what what Powell comes out with this week. And um, and depending on on which way, you know, the, the direction that the Fed gives us, I think we'll ultimately decide whether we break through this or um, or get rejected by it again. And then and then we'll, we'll continue along that path. All right. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. We also do have Into the Cryptoverse premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.